Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali McGabel. Today's lecture is about transmission of random process through a linear filter. As the figure shows, we'll start with a random process at the input and given a specific system, we'd like to see what's the output of this. So transmission of a random process through a linear time invariant system. The outline of uh, this lecture goes like this. We'll start with the mean of the output, then the autocorrelation of the output, we we'll look at the signals in frequency domain, so we need to look at the power spectral density and the relation with the autocorrelation, some properties of the power spectral density, and then we'll conclude with some examples. So the mean of the input. If you know the mean of the input signal, what would be the mean of the output if we are just interested in knowing what the mean is? So x of t is the random input shown in green, the system here is represented by its uh, impulse response. It's a linear time invariant LTI system, linear time invariant system. And would like to see what's the output mean. I will not focus much on the derivation, but I will be presenting them, giving them in short for your reference. You can uh, stop the video and go into more details if you are interested in the proofs. So if you want to know the mean of the output, Y, of this process, then you got to know that we'll assume we have a wide sense stationary process and uh, the mean of the output will be the mean of the input multiplied by the area under the impulse response or alternatively it's the mean of the input multiplied by the response at frequency equal to zero this makes sense because the average is a dc component so we are multiplying by h at frequency of zero. Capital H is, by the way, the free transform of, of the impulse response or the transfer function of the system. Recall that the free transform of, of the transfer function or the transfer function is nothing but the free transform, which is H of T multiplied by this exponential. If you make the frequency equal to zero, this cancels out. So H of zero is equivalent to the area under the curve of the, of the impulse response. Okay, now the conclusion of this slide is that if you know the mean of the input and its wide sense stationary process, you can easily find the mean of the output by multiplying by H0 or the area under the impulse response. The system, of course, should be known. Otherwise, we don't know what H of T is or H of F. The autocorrelation of the output. Now, we, we want something more. We want to know not just the mean of the output, I want to know the autocorrelation of the output. So to cut it short, the autocorrelation of the output will be the same as the autocorrelation of the input convolved twice, one time with h of t, another time with h of minus t. So we need to do two convolutions. If you are interested in the relation and how we got there, we can start by the definition of the autocorrelation of the output. It's the expected value of the output at two different instances of time. We call them t and u. We can now replace them with the input representation. So the output is nothing but the convolution of the input with the system. And now with a bit of reorganization, the only expectation is of the random part, which is x. The system itself is not random, so it goes outside the expectation. And now this expected thing is nothing but the autocorrelation of the input signal at two different instances of time. Now we can redefine t minus u with tau and assuming that the process is a white sense stationary we can just re remove this and replace it with tau and this is nothing but a convolution double convolution process so as i say as i said the point is summarized here if you want the autocorrelation of the output of a white sense stationary process just give me what's your input give me what's your system i will do the proper convolution and find out the autocorrelation of the output Okay, so this uh, small asterisk represent convolution. Random signals in frequency domain. Now that we have done the autocorrelation and the mean, would like to characterize the white sense stationary random process in frequency domain. So just like the transfer function and the impulse response are related by full transform, we were going to define something uh, for the autocorrelation of the frequency domain. 
So the mean square value of the output random process at tau equal to zero. If you put tau equal to zero, you get the mean squared value because it's going to be squared and the expectation gives you the mean. Now the power spectral density uh, of a wide sensation process uh, related to the output, we can do the following. If the input is wide sensationary process, the output, of course, is going to be wide sensationary. So again, if the input is wide sensationary process and we are going through a linear time invariant system, then you got to expect that the output is also going to be a wide sensationary process. Going through the math, the expected value of y squared, which is, um, which is uh, the O2 correlation at tau equal to zero, is given by the following. And we are going to define uh, S, capital S in frequency domain to be related to the O2 correlation. Of course, we're assuming we're assuming wide sense stationary process. And uh, it's given by the following. So it is uh, given by the area or the free transform of the autocorrelation. So we're now making a pair between the autocorrelation and the power spectral density. This relation is known as the wiener kitchen relation. And uh, just again, forget about the naming. Uh, if you are dealing with autocorrelation, your problem is convolution. Now, to avoid the convolution, the double convolution, we are now thinking of frequency. The frequency is going to make the, the convolution into multiplication. So we can say that uh, we can relate the expected value of y squared in terms of uh, in terms of the frequency. We can write that the power spectral density is related, or, or the power spectral density is the is the free transform of the autocorrelation. And now we can remove the double uh, convolution, and we just use the following relation. The output power spectral density is related to the input spectral density multiplied by the magnitude square of the transfer function. So the output now in power spectral density is related to the input power spectral density, not in terms of convolution, but rather in terms of multiplication. That's handy relation. So we'll keep it on the side. Properties of the power spectral density. Recall that the power spectral density, which is a free transform of this, is going to have at zero, we have seen this, it represents the area under the curve, because if you put f equal to zero, so the DC gain, if you like, the DC power gain is related to the area under the autocorrelation. And similarly, if you put uh, tau equal to uh, zero, you get the expected value of x squared, which is nothing but the area under the curve, because you can write r in terms of uh, inverse Fourier transform, and then put tau equal to zero. So if you take the area under the power spectral density, you get the total area. Of course, it's a power spectral density, so it, 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 mean, it makes sense that if you integrate, you get the total power. But which is equivalent also to the autocorrelation at, at tau equal to zero. The power spectral density is always a positive quantity or, uh, or sorry, non-negative. It could be zero. So because we don't have uh, negative power, it's also going to be an even function because we are just representing the, you know, the physically we have positive frequency. So for real signals, we'll have the same power at the negative and positive frequency. It's just a mathematical representation. Power is always real, non-negative, and it's going to be even. So let's go to the examples now. The following example says sinusoidal wave with random phase. So this is the sinusoidal wave with random phase, and the phase is changing between minus pi and pi. If you recall, we have find we already have found this autocorrelation. It's the expected value of x times a shifted version. So if you go back to our notes, you'll find that this example is already solved. The question is now find the PSD. So the simple relation between PSD and autocorrelation, we need to find the Fourier transform. So I'm coloring the expressions here. So to make it easy for you to trace. So I will take this expression substitute here. And, you know, since we are multiplying cosine by exponential, it is wise to represent the cosine in terms of sum of two exponential with half. So half times two, you get one fourth. 
Now we can multiply the exponent and simplify the integration. Or we can also refer to Fourier transform tables and find out that uh, the Fourier transform of a cosine is two deltas. So or exponential, you get uh, the two deltas. So we have two deltas shifted at F1 and F2. So you can check the appendix and uh, get that straightforward. That's to say that if your signal is pure cosine, the only random part is the phase. Remember, this, this, this is power spectral density, so this random part is not going to show, which means that all your power will be concentrated on one frequency with the following exact magnitude. Okay, so remember that this is the power spectral density. So if you find the power, you need to find the area under these two, which is a squared over 4 plus a squared over 2. That give you a squared over. Uh, that will give you a squared over uh, two, which is nothing but the power of a sinusoid. Remember that the magnitude is uh, a. Uh, we get a squared over two, the power of a sinusoid. So we have just proved that. So this is the power spectral density of this example. The second example, which we have also done before, regarding the random binary wave. We have found that for a random binary wave, which takes either A or minus A for a given period, the power spectral density is given by the following autocorrelation. The, power, the autocorrelation is given by the following expression. So this is like a, a triangular function. Remember what's the Fourier transform of a triangle function? So the required in the question is to find the power spectral density. Using, using Fourier transform, we find that it's sinc squared. And um, if you want to sketch that, uh, I can say that the power spectral density, if, if you want to define the energy spectral density, you know, energy and power are related as, uh, with time, right? Because uh, energy, power is the rate of use of time. So, so if you want, the power is energy divided by the period divided by T. So if you want to sketch the energy spectral density or power spectral density, the difference is going to be in the time relation. Okay, so uh, if uh, if the power spectral density, if you, just, if you want to get it exactly, you equate, so you multiply both sides by t, you get t squared. Anyhow, if you want to sketch the energy spectral density, this is it, here we go. Or if you want the power spectral density, it is the following expression. So this shows you exactly that there's a high power concentrated at low frequency, and there is less power as you go into higher frequencies. This is a sketch of sinc squared. For the third example, uh, if you like. Uh, it's a mixing of a random process with a sinusoidal process. We'll not do it in details, but in this example, we are interested in the output. So the process given, x is a random process. It's multiplied by a cosine. So the question is, what's the output autocorrelation? And what's the output power spectral density? And once you, want, you get one, you can find the other by Fourier transform. By definition, r is the expected value of the output multiplied by a shifted version of that. So I multiply this with a shifted version of this. So you get two x's and you get multiplication of cosine. Now we can use your cosine trigonometric by looking at sum and difference. The sum will go into zero in the expectation and you are done. You are saying that the output is related to the input correlation with the following relation. If you want the power spectral density, then we use the Fourier transform and of course, we can convert the cosine into exponentials. And uh, that will give you that the fact, if you start with the power spectral density, x, and you modulate it by a cosine, you get two shifted versions. So the power will be shifted at two new frequencies. This is like the modulation process. OK, so we are shifting and scaling by 1, 4. Remember, it's not 1 half because this is power. If we are just multiplying by cosine, a signal, then you get a scale of half. But if you multi if you if the amplitude goes by scale of half, then the power will be related to the square of the magnitude, which is one fourth. Uh, this is just a proof of the power spectral density. I leave it for you. You can just pause the video. We already have proved this relation that the output power spectral density is nothing but the input multiplied by h squared. If you want a clearer proof with colors, I just leave this for you. It's beyond the scope here. 
it's important to note, but it's um, not a main target for this course. We just need to use this final relation. Okay, time to challenge you. I'll leave you with the following challenge. Which of the following is not a property of the power spectral density? A, B, C, D, or E. Please write your answer in the comment section. And the second question says, a random process with the following input mean is transmitted through a system with the following transfer function. So the mean of the output process is, what is the mean of the output process? Again, that's left for you. So please write your answers in the comment section and see you in the next videos.